Hey guys, it's 21 Maxwell here and welcome to episode 8 of the Ruthless Aggression TW Save. We are now on the Go Home Show of Monday Night Raw before WrestleMania and this is just a small show, it's not 8 segments, we do like pre-show segments but it's more so just rounding up from, our, from the Raw side of things so we can get it all set up for WrestleMania and then come next week's Raw, it all begins again. So we're putting this show from the Nassau Coliseum in the tri-state region, just basically try to get as good a crowd as possible, get some money in, and you can see the wrestling industry and the economy is falling even more. Even worse is the fact that a lot of our ratings are down and a lot of companies, a lot of TV companies have come up to us and said, we need an improvement or we're going to chuck you off the air. So yeah, this, this save is, is, is interesting, it's going to be interesting to do it, chucked off the air, try to find networks for stuff, but it said obviously we can we won't lose any more reputation or stuff, we won't be judged in reputation or popularity in, in kind of matches and shows, so we'll be giving a lot more people opportunities uh, post WrestleMania as we, as we look to kick on and basically build a new generation. So say five pre-show segments, we just pay people want to put over and eight segments to establish WrestleMania. Let's crack on and see how the show goes. So in an extremely short match, Sylvain Gronier defeats Arico in 448 by pinfall using a form object. I got a 42 D, which is quite good to see. Uh, Arico and Sylvain Gronier have shown great chemistry, so that's a good match between them. Any worker improvements? Arico has improved his performance skills. So overall, it brings Gronier back to his injury. We'll give him a couple of matches before we push him back onto the main roster, so that's a good start. In an extremely short match, Jackon defeated Melissa in 505. By pinfall with a tornado DDT, 31 E. The plan was to kind of put Melissa over, but Jacqueline refused to do the job, so I thought, well, we may as well put her on and give her some TV, so just an appearance essentially, just to get her skills up at least and get uh, Melissa's reputation up a bit. So that improved Jacqueline's performance skills. Third pre show match, and about had solid in ring action, but non existent crowd heat. Jamal defeated Steve Richards in 626 by pinfall with a small drop, and I got 44 D. Victoria did some good work at ringside for Steve Richards, but no skill improvements. Match 4. In an extremely short match, Trish Stratus, the women's champion, defeated Sarah Del Rey in 444 with a Stratus faction, 49 B. Trish Stratus came out the match looking good, so that's good. Hopefully, this could be a, maybe a few way down the line once we get Sarah Del Rey established. Uh, she debuted the Arrogant Ar Ar Heel gimmick, which got an initial 73 rating, and that was her offer game, so. You know, that could be a decent rematch once Sarah Del Rey's up and sorted in the WWE, so I'm happy with that. In your final pre-show match, and a match had some good action but not much in the way of heat, the Hurricane and Rosie defeated Goldust and Ray Trailer in 709 when the Hurricane defeated Ray Trailer by pinfall with a superhero splash. 57, 56 even, sorry, C-. minus. Hurricane is improving his performance skills, Rosie is improving his flying skills, a good match between two mid-card teams. I'm more than happy with that, especially because Goldust and Ray Trailer are kind of put together at the last moment. That's decent results in the pre-show, just to crack it on to Raw. In the ring, The Rock and Triple H go back and forth while entertaining insults towards one another. Nice and simple phone we get at the start of Raw, holding up for the match, and like a solid 92A. So a good start there, and that continues the feud. We then have a bout between Lita and Gail Kim, which saw Lita defeat Gail Kim in 5.8 with a twist of uh, date. 48 D plus. Again, it's pushing towards this Lita heel turn, but a good, good match there between them. And basically got Gil Kim back on TV. The match had some good action, but not much in the way of beat. The Hardy Boys defeated Val Venus and Storm in 8:51 when Jeff Hardy defeated Val Venus with the extreme combination. 63 C again, but pushing the Hardy Boys up. I was going to put them in at WrestleMania. I think the push will come post WrestleMania. We'll maybe use something like an angle where they didn't on WrestleMania's card. You know, the retribution, you know, the road to retribution after it. And about the feature great action and average heat, Vitamin C defeated Rob Van Dam and Booker T in 1954 when Chris Jericho defeated Booker T by pinfall with a lion salt, 78B. My plan here is to just obviously give Jericho and Christian a bit of momentum getting into this match. It wasn't actually going to be two singles match, but with the stat card, it's now going to be a fatal four way for Booker T's Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania. No work improvements there, but I think the four of them should pull off a good show. Let me see you in the ring talking about how good they are post match. 84B plus. Perfect. Well done, Christian and Jericho. 11. In the ring, Sting calls out Goldberg, and Goldberg 
uh, and challenging a match, Goldberg responds and accepts the challenge by Brawl and Sting, the last big brawl to get them to set up for a match at WrestleMania, 96 A+. Plus. Perfect. I, I really barely put my matches, but it's working fine with this feud and I'm looking forward to the payoff. And then my main event match, and about the featured great action and a good crowd, Evolution, Randy Orton, Triple H, Batista and Ric Flair defeated The Rock, Shawn Michaels and the Dudley Boys in a traditional Survivor Series match in 44-27. Yvonne Dudley was eliminated first, then Batista, then Bubba Ray, then Ric Flair, then Randy Orton, then Shawn Michaels and finally The Rock. Finish saw Eric Bischoff take over as the referee as the official, the original official was knocked out so I gave Triple H the win. 78B, fairly decent match. Three storylines could progress with this, so that's even good. Bubba Ray Dudley was off his game out, we can allow that, and Triple H, Batista, and Yvonne Dudley all put improved performance skills. I mean, so that's a pretty decent finish to the show. It puts all three feuds in a good position going to WrestleMania and finish the show. The Rock is in the ring with Ric Flair in the background. He looks up when he hears the crowd start to roll and spots Triple H come springing out from the locker room, however. By the time Triple H makes it to the right, oh, she's the other way about. I mean, that's so basically the plan was Triple H is in the ring with Ric Flair. As soon as he sees The Rock sprinting out, Triple H makes a run for it, and The Rock, it's who be The Rock that attacks Ric Flair, so that's just the way the, the angle's written out, so that should be flipped about. But still, The Rock was a star in the segment, Triple H was good, and the storyline continues 85 B, so you get the picture, you know, it's basically. Triple H using Ric Flair the shield and the rocks come out and beat him up, which just they thought he did it wrong. Which unfortunately happens in some of these angle packs, but you have to go with it. But good segment there, 85p plus. And overall, 81b, yep. So as I say, there's no specific comments to make about this show, so we can just start using MB on with us to push them because it's not going to affect our popularity. So we'll check now and see how we've done the ratings to see if it was a wee bit better. It was quite quick. Fans were real struck uh, gold with the show, the viewers. Feedback was excellent, that's good. Ikimo Fatu has been singled out as one to watch, good stuff, because we've seen them. And email TSN are still unhappy with Raw. We got a 247, so it's a better show on TSN, they're still unhappy. And a 592 on Spike, which was really a, the last show as well, that's good. A quick look at my decisions, and that is just the development signing of Mike Crow. But as I say, because of the way it is, we won't lose any popularity, I think, so I think we'll be stuck in here, we'll be stuck in the cult um, until the end of this shock phase, so we'll be stuck in the cult for a wee while, but we'll go away and we'll see what happens. So I hope you enjoyed that show, guys, that is us on the road to WrestleMania, we'll just get one more show, smacked into book, and then we'll be there. And it'll probably be a big mass rundown and stuff like that, uh, post-WrestleMania, uh, before we kick on the road to WrestleMania 21. So until then guys, take it easy, and hopefully catch out SmackDown in a couple of days time. Bye bye.